All right, chapter five, humerus and shoulder girdle. So the shoulder girdle consists of the clavicle, the scapula, and the humerus, as we're able to see right here. The proximal humerus, <clears throat> we have the head of the humerus. We have this anatomic neck, which is right here. We have our lesser turbicle, which is a tuberosity. So our lesser turbicle right here. We have our surgical neck underneath. We have the intertubecular groove, the bicipital groove, or the intrabecular right here, the open space. And then we have the greater turbicle or the tuberosity, and the greater turbicle is right here. Uh, we have what's called the deltoid tuberosity here, and then the rest and the remaining is the body and shaft of the proximal humerus moving down. So our external rotation of our anatomy, so within our external rotation uh, right here, you can see that the palm of the hand is turned out. You can see that the central ray is at that coracoid right here and then in this picture what they're not showing you is you should have light field to the outside of the humerus and into the jugular notch to include the entire clavicle in that image okay so we want to include the entire clavicle and you can see here that you've got the entire clavicle and you're starting to see some of your vertebral bodies running right down here okay so we are seeing the head. Um, this open space right in here is the um, is the glenoid humeral joint. Okay, we have the anatomic neck here. We have the surgical neck here. You can see your groove right here. Your um, greater turbicle, your lesser turbicle right in here, and then your uh, the shaft, the body running right straight down there. So once again, it's laying out here for your external rotation. Um, the labeling portion as far as what A is, B, C, D, the lesser turbicle, E, the anatomic neck, F, the surgical neck, G, the body and shaft. So C, the bicipital groove right here, and then your greater turbicle here, and your lesser turbicle here. Okay?